How should amplifier manufacturers be reading power? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delacella with Audioholics. I think it's time to do some more amplifier talk. You know, it's been about six years ago when I did a video on AV receiver power ratings, and I went into pretty in-depth detail about how receiver manufacturers have been rating power and how I think they should be making some changes. I figured I'd do a quick refresh on this topic and just explore the topic for the entire range of amplification, not just for AV receivers. So I put together a little quick PowerPoint presentation. Now look, I'm not bashing any manufacturers. In fact, I own one of the amplifiers that are in these results and I wanna to talk to you guys about that. So let's take a look here. Amplifier power ratings before or after the knee. So here we have two graphs of two different amplifiers. And the one on the left is a manufacturer that rates their amplifier at 200 watts a channel. This is the Marantz Amp 10, a 16 channel amplifier. And if you look at the power versus distortion one kilohertz sweep test that I ran, you can see that um, right above 100 watts, the graph goes from horizontal to vertical. And then once you're at 200 watts, you're at the complete vertical side of the graph. And that's the area where the amplifier distortion starts going way up because you're running out of voltage. And this is where the amplifier is rated um, for power for 200 watts. Now this is still relatively low distortion. It's at 0.1% at 200 watts and a little bit higher at uh, 1%. And that's actually the de facto standard. If you look at the old magazines from back in the day that when they used to rate amplifier power, they would rate it at 1%, which I don't agree with. I think that's pretty high clipping at that point. But now if you look at the amplifier on the right, that's a 300 watt rated amplifier. That's a class A CT2300, still one of my all time favorites. Even though it's rated at 300 watts, the knee doesn't happen until about 344 watts. You can see at 300 watts, it's completely horizontal. So that's at the very linear operating region of that amplifier. There's still plenty of voltage left, still plenty of headroom left, and it's clean. And the knee doesn't happen until well beyond its rated power. So my concern there is if you look at an FFT distortion plot, and this is the Marantz again, you can see at the one watt rating, the FFT is clean. The harmonics are extremely low. This is a really well-designed amplifier, and it's just a beautiful output at one watt. But when you measure this at the 200 watt rating, you can see the FFT, the harmonics start getting pretty nasty. There's lots of harmonics. Now it's debatable whether or not this is audible. It really depends on your listening habits how quiet your, your noise floor is in your room, how revealing your system is, and, and how good your speakers are, and just how good your hearing is. I have some thoughts on that, and perhaps I could do another video on it. But you could see that this amplifier is running out of gas. There's some pretty high harmonics here. They're still down. I mean, I think the, the third harmonic is still down to like minus 75 dB. So it's not as horrible as it looks. That's why the distortion is still relatively low. But if we were to measure this again at the FFT at, uh, let's say 120 watts, where the power is rated before the knee, those harmonics would be much less. And then, you know, thinking about this, when you're rating amplifier power, if you look at the Marantz AV10 in this case, and it's rated at 200 watts, when I measured dynamic power, I only got 220 watts, and that's basically the same power I got from the continuous rating. There's not a lot of dynamic headroom on that amplifier, especially because they're rating it at, uh, above the knee. And it makes me wonder, should they have rated this as a 120 watt amplifier? Then you'd have like 2 dB of dynamic headroom, more, you know, more boasting rights to say, hey, my amp has a lot of dynamic headroom. Whereas with the class A amplifier that's rated at 300 watts, when I measured dynamic power, I got 394 watts. That's you know over dB, 1.2 dB of dynamic headroom. So that opens up another topic of debate. Should we be rating these amplifiers more conservatively so we have more dynamic power and more dynamic headroom to, to boast about as another spec? 
because right now the way this is with the Marantz is there's really no dynamic headroom in the amplifier because they're rating it at 200 watts. So I'd like to get your questions and answers down below. What do you guys think about how amplifier power should be rated? Do you think it's fine the way it is now, or do you think we should be rating it before the knee like I was talking about earlier in the video? And speaking of which, if you want to answer this question directly, you can meet me in August in Raleigh, North Carolina from August 4th through 6th at the Audio Advice Live event. I'm going to give you a little clip to show you what that's all about. I hope to see you guys there. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening. And I hope to see you at the Audio Advice Live event in a few weeks. The premier audio and video experience in the United States this August 4th through the 6th in Raleigh, North Carolina. Audio Advice Live is going bigger, bolder, and louder. Audio Advice Live is the best place to learn about the latest trends in high-performance audio, home theater, two-channel, turntables, or headphones. Meet with the industry's top experts, brands, and influencers to hear all the latest and greatest gear live and in person. Register to attend now at audioadvice.live.